you are tuning in to the fastest growing fitness, health, and entertainment podcast on YouTube. This is Mind Pump. Uh, so in today's episode, we answered fitness and health questions that were asked by viewers just like you. By the way, subscribe to this channel, share it with your friends, set on your notifications. And by the way, if you're one of the first 30 people to leave a comment and we pick your comment, so we have to pick one of those, you can win a free t-shirt. I'll show you that in just a second, uh, what it looks like. But let's get into the episode. Let me give you the rundown. So we open up with our intro portion. That's 44 minutes long. Uh, we start out by talking about Adam falling down the stairs. It's getting a little clumsy these days. We talk about the Super Bowls commercials. We talk about how China is making super monkeys. Good stuff over there in China. Oh, my God. Yeah, doing crazy We're stuff. all doomed. Then we talk about how there's a bill in Nevada that could allow companies to create their own governments. That sounds cool. We talk about a study how that talks about how human males have big wings and small huevos yeah. and what that means. Uh, we Killing talk about it. the stock market. We debate about the economy. By the way, let us know in the comments who you think is right, me or Adam. Uh, <laughs> we talk about why overweight people who are older might live longer. We talk about how ICE is overrated. And uh, we mention how there's employees in uh, Alabama who are trying to create a union at Amazon. Good luck. And then we talk about bone broth protein. Then we get into the questions. So the first question that we answered, this person wants to know if there's fat memory. So you know about muscle memory, but what about fat? Does fat remember? What does fat remember? I don't know. Ice the next, cream. next question, this person wants to know about all the advantages and disadvantages of all the different kinds of pull-ups, close grip, wide grip, supinated, pronated, that kind of stuff. The next question, this person wants to know what we think of functional bodybuilding. Uh, so programs that focus on functional training, but are also bodybuilding focused. And then the final question, we rank our top four uh, supplements. So we talk about which four supplements we think are the best. Also, this month, we've put together a bundle called the Phase 2 Bundle. This is for two of our most popular programs, MAPS Performance and MAPS Aesthetic. Both programs give you a phenomenal workout. One of them is uh, athletically minded. The other one is bodybuilder minded. Now, normally when you buy both programs, uh, they would cost you, I don't know, something like 200 and something, $300 at retail. But right now you can get them both for $79.99. That's it. So $79.99. Uh, and it's uh, and that's it. Lifetime access plus 30-day money back guarantee. Here's what you got to do if you want to check them out. Go to mapsfebruary.com. That's M-A-P-S February.com. And here's the t-shirt, by the way, that you could win. Check this out. Look at this beauty. Oh, yeah. Mind Pump t-shirt. By the way, this is spun with real gold. I know it looks like cotton, but it's real gold. None of you are going to get a gold shirt. All of you will get the cotton one. Just want to tell you that. it'll get you some. Leave a comment if you're one of the first 30 and Doug likes yours the most. This is what we'll send to your house for free. It's pretty amazing. Anyway, enjoy the show. I have something to to share with you guys that- um, Is I it wanted- a sandwich? No, oh, man. no, no, no. All like right, a sorry. shit sandwich? Well, you mean like where I, no, like a real, no, like food. Keep your sandwich. Uh, share food with us. Oh. Since when do you eat sandwiches? Yeah. I like sandwiches as well, bread, so basically the meat. <laughs> yeah. I can't have dairy. I was just say, you're not even a sandwich. You don't to handle produce and just give me bologna and mayonnaise. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. How does that work? So uh, this has been happening to me, and I don't know if it's because uh, my house has so many stairs or um, I'm getting old. Or it's probably that one could be the marijuana too. So I, wow, this, this is has happened now three three times in, in door number one, two or three. Justin. Yeah, three times three. where I just missed the last step of the stairs. Uh, I'm just you know I'm doing something either I'm doing something else whether it's on my phone or I'm you know looking somewhere else or, and just I I think I'm at the bottom and I'm not at the bottom yet. And I've done this now, and it's like I've strained my I've strained <laughs> my hip, I've strained my knee, I've I've, I've crashed on the floor. Counting them, dude. <laughs> I don't I don't know what's going on, but it has never happened to me in my life before, oh, where I you know fall on the steps, and I'm just mis I'm miscalculating, and I've done it three times now since I've lived at this house. So it's only been so two normally years. you have good balance and awareness, and now it seems to be yeah. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Is it am I getting older and I'm losing my my balance and coordination, or am I just yeah. multitasking? You, you told the wrong guy, dude. Yeah. I'm the I'm the WebMD guy. You're just well, distracted. Uh, I'm about to scare the shit out of you. Does it? I mean, does this happen, to you guys? No, nobody misses step. Doug, no, I feel like Doug should be missing steps by er, now. Early. <laughs> that's early signs of. Uh, Doug, you, he went through a phase of that. Yeah, yeah. that's early he, signs he of. Through. I don't miss steps. Yeah, no, ne- oh, neurological uh, degeneration. Is, what it is. <laughs> is that that's what one it of the is? first oh. steps? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I hope you're not getting something. I weird. don't know what's going on, man. Do you have any tingling anywhere? No tingling. Although hair loss. No. Oh shit. It's already. 
gone. Already, <laughs> oh no! It's already left. Oh no! It's, oh, no. It's it's combine those two, it means something bad. Yeah, yes. I've done that before. Okay, where, thank God, my you guys are being bitch right never now. Had, I thought I'm all alone on this. But right I now. wasn't the athlete though, so yeah. for me, it's normal. Yeah, maybe that's I mean, why it's bothering me. Are you falling up the stairs or down? No, it's the coming stairs. down. Okay. It's coming down. So you step bigger than you think. Yeah, like so the the the, <laughs> the last one. I think I'm on the main floor, and I'm not. I'm on the step, and so it, you whoa, uh, and then it, I normally either <laughs> fall or catch myself. No, I always out. jam up the stairs, and then I'll, I'll sometimes I'll catch my toe on like the top one, and I'll fall. That's because uh, your toe's weird, though. That's because yeah. I have weird toes. Yeah, it points yeah. weird. Yeah, and I, you have, you have heavy true. cakes too. So yeah, that, you know, I'm heavy. I'm trying to really get some energy behind yeah, my steps. It's like just a lot of momentum. You gotta get locomotion. Do you go up the stairs fast because you turn the lights off and the monsters there? Do you do Something that like thing? that, dude. I told you guys I have like this fear. What fear? That's always been there. That someone's gonna reach out of the stairs. Yeah, Don't you bro. remember he said that? Yeah. Wait, someone's gonna. He, reach- brought, he brought this up like a yeah. couple hundred episodes ago. Yeah. My next door neighbor was uh, so my stairs of my childhood stairs growing up. Like it, it turns and it goes around the corner and you go up and it's open. And so I was just doing my thing, going up the stairs, going to 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 go to the so bathroom. Grab his ankle. And grab my leg, and like from then on, I was scarred. That terror, that's terrifying. Yeah. So the, so under the stairs, I, I imagine just like hairy arms. Oh, uh, so under the stairs is open. Yeah. So someone could hide there and kill you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, forget it. Just take me down to the nether world. I don't like that you know one. What I mean, yeah, I did the whole when I was a kid. I like you turn off the light and then you just jam up the stairs because you're scared of the monsters dark. are not fast. It's true. And and yeah. the covers will block them. Yeah, they're apparently slow. every they're, they're single time. They're slow and smelly. I told you guys about when I scared the crap out of my brother. This is one it's one of the beauties about being the older brother is that you are the terrorizer. You're never the one being terrorized. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I my brother got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and for whatever reason I wasn't sleeping and I heard him. <laughs> and then he went in the bathroom, and I went in his room and went under his bed. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. <laughs> how like, old? How old? Oh, gosh. I was probably- 35. 15, <laughs> so he was like eight or whatever. So he's like a good age to scare. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, it. Yeah. And No, maybe 10, 9, something like that. So I'm under his bed. He gets in bed, and I this is how bad I was. I waited a little bit. I was like, I'm going to doze off. <laughs> <laughs> and, then I, and then I shook the shit out of it. Oh my ah! god! Oh man. mom! You know, oh my god! Can I come out. <laughs> yeah, it's me. That's traumatizing. Good night. Yeah, have a good sleep. Do you uh, watch? Now I know you didn't watch the game. You you watched the game, didn't you? Oh yeah, I watched the game. Did you have any favorite commercials or any any that you didn't like? What was your thoughts on the? the yeah, my favorite commercial had to be the Uber Eats with uh, Wayne's World, and uh, obviously it just fit. You know what I'm into, which is like nostalgia. Totally. Like, yeah, they just nailed it with, uh, and it was fun. they just nailed it with, uh, and it was fun Party to see guard. Garth and and Wayne, you know, back at it, and they, they incorporated Cardi B or whatever. But like, yeah, it was just interesting how they kind of wove all that in. So they crushed. I think Uber Eats did great. My actual favorite was Cheetos. I thought Cheetos did the best. Oh yeah, that was good. Cheetos did. Well, the, they brought back Shaggy. Did you? Yeah, and it wasn't me. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, me. Yeah, it wasn't me. That was really really good. And then. Um, the Scott's uh, Fertilizer, I think it is. It, they did one. You know who did that? Scott's Fertilizer. That was the one. They had the guy from Office in there. They had uh, John Travolta Travolta's. doing the TikTok Don't with his daughter on the grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really funny. It was really good. That was done by uh, Banner Media. No, oh, Gary. really? Yeah, Gary Vee did that one. Did you see? Yeah, that was a good one. Did you see the Reddit ad? It was like just a post I for read, five seconds. I read about it, but I missed it because mm. it must have been super short. It's really fast, and so now it's going on the internet. Um, and it's they're really, I mean, it's, they're positioning themselves well as the little guy versus the big guy. Which well, is- so Robin Hood had a, a commercial as well, and it was all positive, you know. Like, I, I wonder if they just did that last second, you know, because they knew that the Reddit was doing. That's oh. what, well, you know, that's why they did it. They did it knowing Robin Hood was was running Reddit. it out, and they wanted, or you, you know, no, they Reddit did it knowing that oh, Robin Reddit Hood was, did it um, in in contrast. Yes, knowing they would be running an ad. The well, problem is though, Robin Hood did like a full on minute plus yeah. commercial. Yeah, I remember that. And one. the Reddit one, I don't even remember. Yeah, uh-huh. because because Robin Hood pissed off a lot of people because they stopped them from trading. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're like, you were supposed to be on our side. Yeah. You were yeah. for the little guy. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's crazy. Kind of crazy. What's uh, what's going on? What do you yeah. think about it though? Do you think? I mean, are do you fault? Uh, Robin Hood, do you think that hurts Robin Hood? Do you think they're fine? What's your thoughts on that? I think that it's, uh, I think this is interesting. I think the internet has now given enough power because here's the deal. If you're a hedge fund manager, you're a millionaire, billionaire, and you're investing, you have a lot of power with your money because you're buying such large amounts of shares. But if you're an average person and you're throwing $1,000 or 2000 or 5000 or even $10,000, you really don't have an impact. But it, the internet now allows enough of these people to get together mm-hmm. to where they can put a squeeze on these hedge funds. You know, they can, And that's what they do. I just look at it as an awesome disruptor. 
you know like yes. it, it's 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 interesting to watch but it's it's one of those things you think is almost inevitable because yeah. if people can gather together just like in any other industry we mentioned with you know the taxi industry the hotel industry like they've all been you know punched in the face well, hard it makes you now it makes me wonder now is looking at uh companies uh, and thinking okay are these companies the kinds that these small time investors will buy because they're cool. You know what I mean? Like GameStop, obviously, everybody's like, we're going to save GameStop. I mean, that's, let's be honest, that's a business oh, model yeah. that's totally, you know, it's going to fail, all right? The nerds, yeah. But like Tesla, Tesla's, cr- Elon, I, he plays to them, obviously, plays to them. In fact, he bought Bitcoin. Did you see that? Dude, Tesla bought a shit ton of Bitcoin. It was like a billion or so. Yeah. Right? And they went through the roof. Bitcoin's at 40 something thousand dollars. It was right uh, Ethereum, right? Is that what they bought? No, it Bitcoin. Something- oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was Ethereum. No, and they're going to start accepting Bitcoin as payment. Wow. So that's their shares went that's, through that's the a big I mean, move. Not shares, but Bitcoin value went through the roof, which ugh, I sold them a while ago. It makes me so mad. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I didn't need I to. I can't even get into mine, dude, right now. No, this is a sore subject for me. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I was like the one that was on the Bitcoin train the yeah. most early on, right? How I'd, many chances you got left? Like two? Uh, you know, so we stopped, right? I stopped guessing, so that doesn't happen to me, but we have a ticket in to get uh, to talk to them. Both Katrina and I were both locked out of our accounts. So wow. now, luckily for me, again, it was, <clears throat> it was like, gambling money to me so i never i never looked at it like i was heavily invested in there um but i mean it's it's uh it's a good amount of money in there that <laughs> that i don't i can't get my hands on now oh, i mean i I, sold- I bought it like three three plus years ago yeah i think you bought it when it was seven thousand yeah i don't know it's like forty three thousand. Yeah, i don't remember what it was so oh was- that's beautiful <clears throat> oh, hey man. i got two articles one is for you justin yeah. and one is for you adam oh okay yeah both are really fascinating who hmm. wants to go first justin let's do yeah, justin all right i'll do yours first Justin. hit me so i'm gonna read to you from this uh this article because you're gonna you're gonna flip out over this you're hyping it up a lot so I know. so this is in china uh so you know the they do really cool I, <laughs> scientific experiments over yeah, there. They certainly do. I, I can't wait. Yeah. So, team of Chinese scientists edited the human version of a gene called MCPH1 into macaques. These are monkeys. Hmm. Uh, the new gene made the monkeys' brains develop along a more human-like timeline. The gene-hacked monkeys had better reaction times and enhanced short-term memories compared to their unaltered peers. So, they they took monkey brains and made them more human. And then let's see what happened. What? Yeah. How far? How far are we into this? Bro, what do you mean? This, like, they is did this it. like a week ago, a year ago? Two, oh, that's what well, I'm this asking. was just published. I don't know when this happened, but I think it was recent. And, and of course, a lot of what are they doing? The out scientific there? communities, like Planet we, of the Apes, is one of my favorite movies. Well, bro, yeah. think about it. Like, if you're not if, when it's reality, you know, <laughs> you know the, I don't want to live through that, <laughs> dude. The whole, the whole, like, uh, you know, sci- sci-fi movie plot where you have like you know half monkey half human i mean they're gonna get the soldiers zoo, they're gonna get the zookeepers first Dude. they're not gonna get us first i mean i feel like we're okay like i mean did you do anything bad things about monkeys before justin are you okay uh, I, not that I, I mean I, I was like a little punk as a kid but like, oh, i don't think yeah, i mess with any monkeys Dude, uh, if monkeys are as smart as humans <laughs> yeah. we're done because they're way stronger uh, you know what yeah. i mean Monkey will kick I mean, your that's ass. if if they want to be that way, right? I mean, that's assuming that they're just not going to be cool and just be like, "Hey, let me out of the cages and roam around with you guys." You're assuming that they just want they're going to be <laughs> Bro, tyrannical. You know what I'm saying? We'd lose every <laughs> we'd lose every sport. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Imagine doing gymnastics against a Dude, monkey. Wait till they start messing with like gorillas. I don't know. And... Will the thumbs fuck them up? I feel like we and gymnastics. Uh, oh, okay. No. Certain sports. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm not gym, talking about competing. Gym, gymnastics. Okay. Yeah. They're not winning. They're not winning football so though. Wait Come a on. <laughs> I don't like, know, bro. I'm trying to wrap my brain. So like before that, it was like Amber and things they're messing with. No, they grew. So, so now they grew like they're, they're real, like live uh, monkeys that that act like humans. Yeah, and they're they're just smarter. They're way smarter than the others because they they did a little tweaking. Dude, what the fuck is going to on? The, right? no, no, dude. Do we have this footage or anything? Did you go? How deep did you go down the rabbit hole? I just one article. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know, right? What if you see the footage and it kind of looks like a human? Yeah, a little right. Bit? That's what I want to see. I want to see, what, <laughs> like, see hey, what their behaviors start like. stalking a little uh, bit. Yeah. Monkey want. Let me hear mine. What's mine? All right, I got one for you. What's my? You made a. I don't know how I feel about that, Sal. Pretty pretty yeah, bad pretty bad. So you you made a I don't know if I want to say a prediction, but we you kind of speculated on this a while ago. So <clears throat> are you it, gonna confirm it for me? Or it might try, actually be happening. Try shit on it. No 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 let's no dude. It. Okay, <laughs> this is you'll love this. Okay, let's hear it. So this is a bill in Nevada that was put forth. It hasn't passed yet. Okay. But it's very interesting. Okay. The title of the article says Nevada bill would allow tech companies to create governments. So, oh, bro. Yes. So, what they're doing is that in this bill, they're creating what? these like innovation zones, right? So, 
a big tech. And then what they're trying to do is they're trying to track big tech companies. This is what I've been saying forever. With like yeah. at the Apple campus, they are going to bring it at their like, own little ecosystem, dude. Yeah. They'll have their doctors, their grocery their stores, own their bowling money. alleys. Yes, their own money, everything. So check this out, right? So th- these are called innovation zones. And they're obviously to jumpstart the state's economy, which I think would work. I think if they did this, it would explode. So the zones would permit companies with large areas of land to form governments carrying the same authority as counties, including the ability to impose taxes, wow. form, form school districts wow. and, and courts, and provide government services. Oh, my God. Yeah, dude. So you work for a company. And wow. Then, just like you said, right? You'd work for a company, and they'd be like, we could pay you right. in we could dollars. Eat, exactly. Or we could pay yeah. you in Apple dollars. Apple, Apple bucks. bucks. Yeah. You Which know? we have the best doctor over yeah. here. We have the best bowling alley here. We have the best grocery store over here. So it's up to you. Do you want to get paid exactly. $50,000 a year with or a- Or 100000 Apple bucks. Yes. Which is valued way more within this yes. whatever. Think wow. <laughs> crazy, right? Wow. Now, it hasn't passed, but if it passes- So how, how do you guys feel about it? If that, now that- now that this prediction that I said is maybe a reality, are you? Do you think it's ridiculous? Do you think it's actually smart? Do you think it'd be good for the country? What do you think? I think it's. I think it's. Uh, I think it'd be great. Um, I don't see anything wrong with it as long as they don't obviously supersede. And they would never do this. Supersede federal law or whatever. <laughs> but could you imagine? As long as they don't have their own little army. I was going to say, what the hell, man? <laughs> are you guys thinking big term here? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to have their own like soldiers and shit. Google goes to war with Amazon, dude. <laughs> I mean, why? It's though? The why? I mean, to me, it's like it's uh, it, it's completely voluntary that you you come you come work there. You have access to it. I think they could even do it in a way where you have the option. You don't like I said. You don't, you could either take the hundred thousand dollar salary where we pay you in U.S. dollars, and then you go get you go pay for whatever you want, or you can take fifty thousand you know Apple dollars or whatever or two hundred, however you figure yeah. it out, right? You know what I'm saying? I think they could do it where you have an option. You're not yeah. forced. To be in this in this bubble or whatever, but you have the option to and, do it, and you have to imagine that these private companies would manage their currency way better than the federal government. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Oh, I don't I don't foresee them inflating the shit out of their. Yeah, it all has to equate to something. Yeah, there's and, some value behind it. Yeah, I could see it being very efficient. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you you'd be like, man, it's weird. It cost me, you know, this much money for lunch outside of the campus, but in here it's two dollars. I get this. Amazing- it is interesting though, because you think about how much money. I wonder how much money they spend on like corporate corporate espionage like type stuff where you know they're they're either trying to like implant people to other uh, uh, companies or they're also trying to like like buff buff up their security and like dude. what did you watch way too much conspiracy? that already happens no what, it, espionage that, you go in, are you kidding me that what, already happens yeah what are you bro, talking about that, why bro? do you think they're oh. so like protective over their secrets and shit like, you, dude it's true if you go he's right dude if you, I have family members that work in explain tech. what your theory is here come on so okay so so there's a company they have this they're doing these technological uh, Samsung they're right doing right these tech advancements. It, it, their security to get in and see what they're doing is oh, ridiculous. Oh, no, I know that. Okay, yeah, I agree yeah. with that. I mean, yeah. that's like when, when Katrina is, like, uh, when she worked for uh, J.J. Albanese, when they did anything for, like, like construction, right? Like, you're talking about moving dirt and building buildings. They they had code names for what the building was. They right. all had to sign non-disclosures. If they took their phone out on the job, fired instantly. Mm-hmm. Like it, they're so yeah. No, I get that because but that's just them. And also doing stuff so the government can't come in. You know, like I don't know. Man. So I don't see it. that. I don't subscribe to. What I know what it is is that if you're Apple, you don't want Google being able to someone from Google being able to learn whatever yeah. tech or whatever you're onto because it's it's a race for all of them. Mm-hmm. That's it's, it, that's as deep as it goes for me. I don't think it's like this crazy government conspiracy or there's like <laughs> well think about how espionage know, espionage going on I mean, it's like you're you're just trying to think protect that's your- a lot more power now that they have like accessible to them that's what's my point think about how brilliant this is right let's you know because campuses are massive these tech campuses are huge imagine if they buy in, in nevada the land is way less expensive than right, it is right you know uh here in the bay area in california so you buy a huge plot of land in the desert and you have your own transportation. I oh, think this is come all- work here. You don't need a car. That's right. We, got, we don't need any. You don't need a grocery store. You don't need massage. You don't need doctors. We got everything for you. You never need to leave. Like that is it'd be so efficient and also productive. It would be. Yeah. I think it's brilliant. And again, you have the option, so it's not like you gotta go. You don't have to go work for Apple. Or you don't have to go work for Tesla. You have the option to go do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as long as there's competitors still out there. Well, and what will happen is it'll only make all the other companies have to compete with that. 
that, yeah. which is which is for the consumer, for us that are living in this world, mm. I think it just makes it a better place. I love the idea. Yeah, and then your own schools, you know, all that stuff. That'd be crazy. And then, I mean, it, it would be hard. It would be hard to leave a place like that because you got everything taken care of. Yeah. You probably create like hardcore employees. Because you get everything you uh, want there. Talk about just yeah, entrenching the court even more. Even a social, you know, the social scoring system that they have in in, in China, oh you God. could totally do that. So, oh, you're a great employee at you haven't missed a single day. Yeah. This costs fifty percent off. So for I've you. I've told you guys that my my niece is a recruiter for Facebook. She used to work at Google before, and it's crazy what her how competitive her position is, and like how many people are employed at those companies just to go get people. Oh, yeah. And the negotiating that happens just to get, like, somebody that's really, really high up at, like, mm -hmm. Google to come over to Facebook, the amount of money and shares and, and perks and things that they get, this is just going to take that to a whole other level. It's like, oh, well, you could we'll get your housing for free. It's going to allow them to do a lot of cool stuff. I'm all for that. I think it's brilliant. It, I think it is very smart. Yeah. I think it's very interesting. We'll see if the bill passes. Yeah. We'll Wait, so when did it? When's it? When it just went on or what? What's it, uh, uh, I don't know exactly when, but it's it's in there. You know, wow, that's interesting. Yeah. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. That's really interesting. Isn't that cool? Yeah, hey, cool. I got. Uh, I, I read an article on you. You know the theory that humans um, evolved being like hyper promiscuous, right? That we just yeah, had sex, sex all the time. Sex yeah, sex at dawn. Yeah, sperm competition. And one of the arguments is that because the human male have such a large uh, penis in relation to our size, that that's because it's designed to displace other semen to, you yeah. know, whatever. It's a plunger. Well, so, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So there's actually a counter theory to this. So I did not know this, but... We may have uh, large penises uh, uh, compared to other uh, primates, uh, but we also have very small testicles compared. Mm. They have very large testicles, and the reason for that is we don't we don't produce nearly <laughs> so as much. We don't pr produce nearly as much sperm as most primates do. So what does this say? Well, it says that we probably are. We've probably been somewhat monogamous for a very very long time because. When you're competing with sperm, it makes sense to produce a lot of sperm. Well, wait a second. Wait, wait, wait a second. You, you just brought an article up just like a week or two ago that talked about one, one like uh, one like droplet of of semen is like freaking enough to impregnate like a yeah. If you had to, if every sperm made it to the egg, well, yeah, but, but I that's mean that's not how it works. The way it works is obviously you produce X amount of sperm and it increases the odds if there's more sperm. Well, like a gorilla. Way more sperm than than you do. <laughs> Way more, just all over. Just There's tons, oceans of it. Right? <laughs> so, so th what that says is because they 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 mate much more. That's the competition. Whereas with human males, we don't produce nearly as much sperm as other primates. So, do you subscribe? I don't subscribe mm. to this. I I believe that we were very promiscuous. I think that w we've evolved though over time, whether it be through our own morals or religious morals or whatever. I that don't. sacrifice is worth it. I think that we were. I think we were fucking everything. Here's why I disagree with you. Okay, let's I'll hear. disagree with you for two reasons. One, the sperm part that makes perfect sense. Here's the other part: human babies are extremely uh, dependent on on humans, on on adults. They're like we give birth to fetuses, right? You've ever watched uh, a chimpanzee baby? It's like automatically it can cling to mom's fur. It could do things for itself. Human babies are pretty much worthless, worthless. for a long time. Yeah. And so what this means is, we, and but they and they're also attached to mom quite a bit, right? So the the human male probably had to stick around a lot and take care of that baby. We were probably much more monogamous than promiscuous. Otherwise, there's no way we would have survived because our babies would have died. No, what yeah, are you well, talking the, about? The, the argument is the tribe. Yeah, the tribe like would take care of. Them. Yeah, I'd, you, you are far less likely to take care of uh, someone else's offspring, and this yeah. is just a fact. Oh, I doubt. I see. I disagree with that. If you have a tribe, I mean. Uh, uh, Put us back, you know, however many years where there's, you know, 20 of us and that there's not another 20 people for hundreds and thousands of miles and it's just us all together. Like, are you kidding me? You're not looking out for your other tent partner friend that's like freaking 10 feet away and like, for sure I am. You have a kid, like we're taking care of it while while the men go out and hunt and then the the, the grandmother. Well, the if everybody's banging everybody, you assume it's kind of your kid. You know, like, <laughs> it's, like, it's one of those things. Like, this could be my kid. Kind of looks know. like me a little kinda bit. Kind of looks like it. Well, I mean, in... in Primates. This Here's is the, what we I, find. I, so I read Sex at Dawn, right? So mm. the the whole thing, and I think that uh, there's a lot of it that I actually uh, subscribe to. What I don't subscribe to is the leap from that to to say that 
uh, that um, being promiscuous today is is in our, our best interest or how we're supposed to be. Mm. So just because sure. just because we did it before or that's how we that we originally evolved. I what I don't what I don't subscribe to is how that community has now made a, a leap from that to that's how we're supposed to be. There's a lot of things that we did before that we don't well, do today that is we've learned from and we're better about. And that's one of those. Things I agree that, with that. I agree with that. Um, there's that, but then there's also our best comparison is comparing ourselves to other primates because those are our closest relatives, and they find again the primates with larger testicles, more sperm. There's more of that going on with with mating. Also, uh, the human in comparison to other primates, the human penis is actually, and, and this is their words, uh, extremely dull. It doesn't. It, this is their quote: "It does not have lumps, ridges, flanges, kinks, or any other exciting feature that other primates have." In primates, that's exciting. This lack of pr- penis complexity is is usually found in more monogamous species. So, in other words. All of our that's such a leap, though, right there. That sentence you just said is a leap. That's the closest. That's the best thing we have to study that could possibly tell us. Of course, historically, all successful societies had usually some form of monogamy. At worst, it was where you, one man, multiple wives. Mm. Although that's proven to be usually causes war and, and, and battles and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's what this. That's what this showing. It's showing. That's what these studies are, are saying. So all balls, no wing. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Or all wing, no balls. All wing, no that's, balls. That's yeah. a weird I'd rather go all wing, no yeah, balls. Yeah, so anyway, pretty cool stuff. Well, what is it? In, in Sex and Dawn, it's the, uh, what, is, what type of monkey? It's the bonobos or whatever? Yes, but do, mm. you, you did, okay, so they say that bonobos, they have so much sex or whatever. But you know when you observe uh, uh, bonobos in when they're not in captivity, they don't behave that way. Mm. So they think it's because they're in captivity. This is how they relieve stress. When they're not in captivity, they act mm. a little bit more. Wait till China gets a hold of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll see what happens in the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're gonna, hey, they'll get, they'll get smart. A bunch of bonobos. <laughs> Half <laughs> human monkeys. Bonobos banging sluts. everything. <laughs> Bonobo horse. Ooh, We're yeah. screwed, man. Just crushing the market. Oh, man. Hey, well, speaking of market, you see... Um, um, I'm watching uh, Bumble, right? That they're trying to get into the New York Stock Exchange right now. It's got a six billion dollar valuation. So I think Ooh, that's something I would invest. I know, in. no, I'm interested in it. I think they projected to open up at like 35 or 37. So the listeners that are always asking about stocks, like um, keep an eye on that one. I think that's going to be really interesting. There was another one too that I, w- I wanted to share. I can't remember what it was. Um, in the stock market, have you been? Uh, have I you know been- Roblo- I thought Roblox was. I don't know when they're supposed to come out, uh, but they were going to be like a, have an IPO or whatever. Yeah, oh, I don't know. I mean, just just watching the market, it's it's like you can't kind of like you can't miss every day. New records, everything's hitting right New now. Re- you know, I read the news. Unemployment is up, but the stock market is also up. Like, oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> now I know, and strange off air, you you out of all of us are the most uh, probably um, suspect or concerned about. Where the real estate and where the stock market is at, and where it, where you, th- I mean, the old saying, right? What goes up must come down, mm-hmm. right? And that we could potentially be setting ourselves up for a massive crash. Do you still subscribe to that? Do you believe that we are heading towards a, a real estate and stock market huge plummet in the next couple of years? Well, all the all of the, if you were to look at the the like the factors that contribute to a bubble. They're all there. Here's the problem. The problem is uh, predicting when it's gonna. There's gonna be a market correction, and uh, and that's the hard part. But does it look like it? Well, yeah, it does. I mean, we we just came out of a, a pandemic. Un- you know, people are unemployed. I, 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 so many people left the workforce permanently after that happened. Yeah, but at the production's sa- down. So at the same time, though, okay, here's the argument to that. At the same time. That you're talking about unemployment and people not making money and losing money. You've got the other side of people that we are Facebook record breaking, Google record breaking, Amazon record breaking. There's tens of thousands, combined millions of employees that work for these companies that are crushing it right now, of with people have stock options in it that are CEOs and executives. So you've got the rich getting much richer. Even though you have the and so those people have the have the uh, income to buy stock and buy real estate yeah, right now, it, so they're driving the market. It's still it's still unstable, um, and you do you see a record number of first time investors in the stock market right now. So a lot of that. Then you add like, in that you add in Robin Hood and then the stock pile and all these abilities just, to buy it, shares of shares, and that's very much uh, bubble like to see this excitement from new people don't know what's going on and they're putting their money in. Um, and as far as this, this, these, these tech companies exploding, what you saw was a huge market transfer. Okay, 
you saw all these mom and pop stores shut down and tech companies which or other big companies that have the ability to to, to operate under new restrictions because of covid exploding right so you saw this huge transfer right like walmart did great right but yeah. if you if you have well, a mom and pop store you're screwed well that's why i think it's yeah. you can't say that we're you know you can't use the example oh oh we're coming out of this pandemic and we have all these this unemployment and these people losing money because for the same amount of people that are losing that there's a bunch of people that are gaining it and uh, maybe more okay well what do you think would have happened had they not printed 40 percent okay of all so dollars last now year? that you're only supporting my argument now okay so when, that doesn't make the economy better well i'm not saying it may this isn't an argument on do i think our economy is better or not the argument is do you think the stock market or the real estate market is going to take a, a dump and i don't think so you so you and think the reason why don't dollars think, don't do that no it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to crash but now you have all that money circulating you have over 40 percent of the money that is that is in circulation today was printed in the last year bro right, right that is crazy so all of a sudden we're playing all it really does is make the dollar less money or goods to be way more expensive right and so, that's included with stock so and then why estate. don't we just keep doing that if there's no side effect to that why don't we just it's keep not going? so again you're 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 cha changing the argument right now i'm not uh, i'm not pro that i'm not saying that we should keep doing that i don't think it's a smart it's a losing it's a long-term losing battle but it, it doesn't mean that it, it necessarily means we're going to crash or this is a bubble that's going to explode it's a correction that'll happen at some point well yeah but so here's okay what's the correction correction look like? Does it look like an 08 correction or does it look like the typical every five to seven year correction? From every from all the people that I follow and subscribe to, uh, it, the correction will be bigger than the, than the previous one. Uh, there's a few different factors. You have a much larger, you have a huge student loan bubble. You have uh, which they're talking about forgiving. Yeah, which oh yeah, that'll be great. I, again, I don't agree with yeah, it. Yeah, okay, so that's yeah. what I'm gonna keep challenging though the things that you're saying because that's where we're heading. Fucking get rid of it. No right. more, no more student debt for everybody. No side effects to that, right? Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know that. Uh, I Presto mean, change it. Yeah. Oh, nothing bad with that one. Yeah. No, that's I mean, I, I, I'm with you on the 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 free when they talk when we're talking about economics. I'm I'm completely free market guy too, so I agree with you. But it doesn't mean that we're not in that. You know, we're, we're, we, we do not, people are making decisions that aren't based that off of that. Yeah, so well, the, these manipulations and what's happening, it's a lot of malinvestment that's going on, a lot of inefficiencies, and that results in a uh, correction. At some point, there's going to be a market correction. Who knows? I wish I could predict when, and I wish I could predict where. Um, I, I don't know who could do that, but again, the people I subscribe to are saying, you know, I mean, and look, a good hedge against possible inflation or whatever tends to be assets, right? because you have something physical. So even if it did drop, if the dollar did lose tons of value, probably still a good idea to own uh, property. Even if it drops, you're better off than if you just had money in the bank. Right. You see what I'm saying? And that's where I'm at. Yeah. I, 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 and that's what you say, you know, why not just keep doing that? Well, you don't keep doing that because then the dollar is worth two pennies in fucking 50 years yeah. or like that. So, but if you have land or you have stock in companies that are going to be around for 20, 30 years, to me, that's the, the best way to hedge, hedge against that. And I also think that the market correction, I mean, if you think it's going to be more than 08, I don't think it's going to be more than 08. I, I think we have different factors involved than, than what was going on in 08. I think it'll be a correction, but shit, if we stay on this trend that we're on right now, and it, let's say the correction is at the end of this year, because we're just probably going to print more money in fucking six months, the correction happens at the end of this year or 2022, it happens, it, it drops, say, 15%, which is crazy. It doesn't matter. This thing went up 45, you know? Yeah. You're still- Well, the, you know, in, in, in 08, when that happened, uh, the amount of money that they printed- uh, which they called quantitative easing back then, right? QE1, I think, or whatever, or one or whatever. Uh, that pales in comparison to the amount of money that we're printing now. And so, and, they're, they're and, and listen, in, in free market economists pre correctly predicted when we first did that, oh, this will never stop. They're going to keep doing this until everything explodes. And they were right. We are continuing to do this. There is no end in sight. And they're going to keep doing it. Yeah. They're not going to stop because if they stop, the pain starts to set in, and there's no political incentive for politicians mm. to do that. If you're in office, you don't want to be the one responsible for the pain, so you keep inflating it, hope it doesn't blow up when you're still mm. in office, are and you, pass are it you, on to the next guy. Are you familiar with trickle-up economics? 
Yeah, but you it's know, what, I, no, I don't subscribe to it yeah. again. You know, don't get defensive like I'm fucking in pro it. You know, so <laughs> everything he's throwing at me right now, it's yeah. like, oh, I'm with you on yeah. the fucking believing in the free market, and that's how we should let it be. Adam's but a commie. Yes, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> you know, he looked every time I say it, he looks at me like. But uh, what's his name? Um, Andrew Wang was that who's running for? Yeah, oh yeah. The, he he tries to present that that that's what trickle what, down, trickle up. It's those, are, those are political. Yeah, is that problem? Is it? Yeah, yeah. it's not Wang. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Freudian slip. Yeah, 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 sorry. Yeah, He's all, and, and we, we were just talking about penises, yeah. yeah. Andrew Wang. Yeah. No, it's uh, uh, trickle up, trickle down. These are all political terms. There is no such thing as trickle down economics. It was a political. It was it's political talk. Same thing with trickle up. This is just their way of selling. A, you know, well, is this, their ideas. I mean, with Tesla buying that much Bitcoin, is that? I mean, is that interesting at all in terms of like them trying to hedge and like go in that direction? Oh, Bitcoin. I mean, you you got uh, big investment companies now that are starting to recommend people invest in Bitcoin. Why would they do that? Right. You well, I mean, I mean, back boy, that form of currency. I mean, does yep. that have? I mean, it looks to me like that's gonna have a lot of power. Well, in the imagine Tesla's in Reno already. So imagine your bill passes like you're saying, and then Tesla uses a Bitcoin within its community. Mm -hmm. Forget having a, a Tesla coin or whatever like that. Yeah. They'll just use the Bitcoin as as that. Pro I mean, that's it's interesting as shit. It's very sure. interesting. So yeah. I, I'm just hoping that will survive the whatever correction that will end up happening. Yeah, save your money or invest it invest in, is in probably, assets is probably the, yeah. the smartest yeah, thing. Saving right? might not even be that know, smart. Saving, yeah, which, who knows? Which kind of sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to take a, a, a left turn here and talk again about uh, health and fitness. So the study came out that a lot of people were sharing with me that showed that older adults with higher BMIs actually had better health than older adults with normal or lower BMIs. Huh? So, in other words, you know, BMI, is body this mass finally index. finally factoring in people with muscle? So, here's this is exactly what I was saying, right? Mm. So, in this study, they showed that uh, people who are normal weight and then gained some weight as they got older didn't become obese, mm -hmm. but became a little overweight, had better health overall than people who maintained the ideal BMI as they got older or who, whose BMI went down. Um, now, of course, my uh, my retort to that is that the that it's muscle, right? Yeah. And you know, one of the worst things you could do as you're older, being super overweight, really bad. Being underweight is almost worse. Right. Being underweight oftentimes indicates uh, you know high you're risk of injury, fragile, fragile illness, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And uh, this just goes highlights again why I hate BMI so much because it doesn't mean much when it's just weight. Uh, on the scale. No, yeah. it's just an easy way to sort of like farm people into a category like really quickly. Like, oh, you you have like too high of numbers, so therefore you need to go through this clinic and take these pills. Yeah, it's, it's terrible because all three of us, I think, are on the obese category of oh, BMI. Yeah. Oh, at least oh, overweight. Yeah. I got phone calls after yeah. I went. Yeah. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> what? <laughs> I told you guys this, dude. No, they're, what happened? They're trying to get me in some obesity clinic. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, bro. What? Dude, dude. Dude. Kaiser, dude. No, they didn't. Bro, bro the hey. fucking doctor didn't look at me. No, he didn't. Hold I on swear, dude. You weighed yourself and then you got a phone call from yeah. them? Yeah, 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 you yeah. I'm a trainer. I got a follow-up. I'm like, yeah. dude. I'll send you a nude right now. Yeah. <laughs> it just it just goes, it was so, it was so like blatantly obvious that they didn't even like, uh, you know, have any kind of, uh, like, they didn't even look like with their eyes and like kind of discern whether or not like my health markers like match what I actually look like. You know, I'm, I'm just thick, okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, thick. Yeah, what the yeah. hell? Don't believe what Adam's just heavy on the bottom part. <laughs> what did they, so what did they try to say to you? Hey, uh, we got these obesity classes. We think you should sign up for. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it was like one of those automated things. They're like, you know, sign up for this this like obesity clinic. There is like oh, in Santa God. Teresa. You know, you know, it'd be funny though is for you to actually go in there like with a camera and stuff like that and go through the whole process. It I should have. It would be funny. Go in there and do some like Turkish okay. get-ups and some, you know, some <laughs> yeah. other stuff. Yeah, can a fat person do this? Oh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. no, but I mean, it's it, you know, when it, with older people too, you got to think about this. Even if it's a little more body fat than normal, you know, one of the things that kills older people is when they get injured or ill and they have to go to the hospital. Their health declines tremendously. Having a little bit of extra weight is a little bit. Of, it's like insurance. Yeah. yeah. Because if you're really skinny or whatever, you go to the hospital. You're not eating much. You see the health decline uh, tremendously. Um, I seen this, I saw this with some of my older clients. Yeah, when you know, you're, I know you're the one that shares all the articles because you can remember. I don't remember where the hell I read this, but I did read that you're starting to see more and more uh, like and sports teams that are getting away from uh, the rice method. As oh yeah, something that mm. I, I feel like that we we have touted. rest, ice, uh, compression, elevation. Yes, yeah, it's so ice in particular. Um, it's funny. I, I was reading uh, about the same thing a few days ago. Uh, ice in particular constricts blood vessels. 
and reduces blood flow. Actually slows down uh, healing and recovery. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so you need the blood flow. You actually, if anything, you want more blood flow right. to happen. Into it. So you know the Juve light that we use? Yeah. Great. That's a great tool to, to use for that. Because yeah. it actually, it's been shown uh, because it does penetrate deeper than the skin, the, the light. It, it causes uh, increased blood flow. So if you put it on an injured area, you speed up recovery. Ice, not a good idea. Ice is good for pain relief. Well, yeah, I was going to say there's got to be a, like a, a difference between like an acute injury or something that's like like immediately swolls up and, and you know, you got to try and like, you know, prevent that from well, getting out of control. So it still makes sense, right, for some of your, you know, professional athlete. You've got, let's say, so there, many times in the NBA you could run a, a game back-to-back or at least a game within two days, right? And you you swell up, your knees swell up so bad from playing, and you're they're this big, right? And so it limits short term, yeah, right. Limits your range of motion, and you got to run it back in two days. Icing to bring down the inflammation, so you can move again. I I see the value still with at the professional level for that person. Uh, but the average person who's just looking for optimal recovery, it's mm-hmm. not the most yeah, ideal thing. It actually thing. gets in the way. Right. Yeah, and you know what? That's a good point because short term, there's a different strategy than long term. Like, do I want to heal and recover better or do I need to feel better right now Right. so I could play the sport? That's the same yeah. thing with like post-workout uh, ice baths, you know? So like uh, if, yeah. you're, if you're doing double days, then it makes sense to do an ice bath after the first workout so that you can do the second workout. Mm -hmm. But if you're just a regular person and you work out five days a week and you're trying to build muscle and and get in better shape, ice baths uh, can actually reduce the muscle building signal that you may send from your workouts. Now, ice baths on their own might have some other health benefits, so you have to kind of weigh that out. Yeah, but well, uh, it'd be cool to see. I mean, you saw that Juve was in with the Niners, uh, yeah, yeah uh, a training facility, and I would love to see that you know happen not just on the pro level, but make its way into the high schools, and uh, you know, and they all start kind of adopting that instead. Well, so Jessica, you know, so stretch marks are, are largely genetic, yeah, right? This why, so this is why Katrina was using it too. Oh yeah, so so largely genetic. So if you're the kind of person that gets stretch marks, then you're probably going to get stretch marks when you're pregnant. Okay. Now, Jessica, she had, she's, she, I thought, we both thought, oh, you might be the type to get stretch marks because as she went through puberty, she had a few. And like if I were, I, I get stretch marks very easily. I got them just from working out. Um, so it's in my genes also. But she used the Juve Light uh, a few days a week uh, while she was pregnant. Zero. Yeah. Not a single stretch mark uh, she got from, from the pregnancy. Yeah. Katrina did too. And she went beyond her due date. So that's usually like if you go beyond your due date, you're much more likely. Uh, to get those, uh, to get stretch marks. Yeah. Did you guys so. see that uh, t- transition? Sorry. Uh, 6,000 employees that are trying to get together in Alabama to start a union uh, f- uh, w- with Amazon. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Really all over the, the pandemic. What happened in the pandemic? You had a bunch of employees that, you know, felt like they were being ab- uh, abused. I read the article too. Like originally I was like abused. What is it? And it's like, uh, they were being told that they, they were being uh, uh, they were get, they got in trouble for not being six feet apart in areas that they could have been six feet apart. They had mm. bosses that oh, damn were being prom- damn companies with rules. I know it was it, when I read all the things that they had listed off for why they're trying to unionize. I was like, come on, dude, this is like this is like what was supposed to be so bad because I don't know if you guys heard there was a lot of like uproar about Amazon treating the employees oh, like yeah. so bad yeah. and it was so terrible and. You had a bunch of people that were tweeting like things. It's super intense to work there. Yeah. Like, like the hours are crazy. Like, you have to like get stuff out. Dude, like, could we be? We are a bunch of pussies. Well, yeah, dude, I mean, it is crazy. Look, that, I, I mean, that's the general look, consensus I, I, I have. I have empathy if you have a job and it's hard, and you know. But you know, here's the deal: you you can always quit, and you can always try that's working right. somewhere. And the, and you hear know, the beauty of of living in a free place like we do is that you're you're choosing to work there. And yes, I understand sometimes circumstances are tough, but usually those circumstances are created by you. So if you're if you're if you're limited in your choices, it's usually because of your choices that you made with your employment or your education or whatever. And um, I mean, just quit. You know, if these people and you know, there's nothing I don't have a problem with unionizing so long as it's voluntary. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll then the company will say you have to join mm-hmm. a union and then you start to run into some, you know, to some issues. Mm. So I have no problem with that, but I mean good luck uh, you know, you know, trying to trying yeah, to go It'd be interesting them. to see how they handle that. Like yeah. How, how that yeah, I'm curious. Out. It just came out, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if they'll be successful or yeah, not. Yeah. Hey, I wanted to um, talk about cuz I know in the past we've talked about collagen protein and how if you're eating a very high protein diet, uh, probably no additional benefit from having 
collagen protein, which I have, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on. But I will say this. So we work with Paleo Valley, right? Yeah. They've, we've had their, we love their meat sticks. That's the thing that we eat the most oh, from yeah. them. Gobble but but they, ma- they make a bone broth protein and we've had it in the back for a while. And I have not tried it for the longest time. Well, none of us do for that exact reason. I thought it was kind of a waste. Yeah. Well, so a so couple things. One, it's even for me, I oftentimes miss that super high protein amount. It's just not easy, right? Uh, if, if I'm, I, that means I would have to eat 180 grams of protein a day. It's not super easy for me to do that. And right. for most people to eat that amount of protein where it's 0.8 or 1 gram per pound consistently, you, you, most people miss it. Let's just be honest. Yeah. If you're missing it, then it does uh, offer benefits for skin, hair, nail, that kind of stuff to supplement with something like uh, bone broth protein or collagen protein. Okay, so my challenge or a question I have about that then is – but we know that whey is better still. So if I have an option where I'm going to, let's say I'm under, okay, let's, I'm like you, 180, 200 grams is what I need. So I'm why at, not just go whey? Right, I'm 160, right? So I'm at 160 for the night. I'm like, oh shit, I need to get some extra protein in. I've got the option to go try a bone broth protein or I have my whey. I'm better off getting my whey. So here's, so in, in some cases, I'd say in a lot of cases, you're probably right. Here's why a bone broth or collagen protein may be of benefit. Gut issue? It, by far the easiest protein okay. you'll okay. ever have to digest, ever. Mm-hmm. It's literally, I, it's almost like you're drinking water. There's no nothing. It's just so easy on the gut. Much, much easier. Now, their bone broth protein, unflavored. So when you mix it, it tastes kind of like bone broth, but, but it's very, very mild. Um, there's no nothing in it except for that, and you guys know me. I get any protein if I have too much uh, powder, it, it can bother me. Not at all. It's the easiest digestion. So it makes ever sense had. for that. But the whole pitch about it, you know, being great for your skin and hair and nails and all that stuff like that. If you're, if you like, let's again, let's go back to that scenario. I don't have gut issues or not like I'm not as intolerant to whey like you are. Right. right? I can do it at least a day, one at once a day or whatever. So. Am I getting the same hair, skin, and nail benefit taking the whey as I am with that? You you probably would unless okay. your amount is super high because of the high amounts of specific amino acids in bone broth and in collagen that you don't get in whey. Now, the reason why whey is so amazing for recovery and muscle building is because it's so high in, in, in the branched chain amino acids. Collagen and bone broth protein are not very high in branched amino acids, but they are very high in other amino acids like proline and some others that are have those those collagen boosting benefits. Now, I imagine too, another benefit of, of the bone broth, I think, I don't know, I would think that it's cheaper. Is it cheaper? Um, you know, that's a good question. We get it for free because we buy them. <laughs> so I don't know. But I would imagine it's probably not super. Now, there's a difference between bone broth protein and collagen protein. Bone broth protein contains collagen in it. Collagen protein is where they go through a more they they go through more processes to just get the collagen from it. So bone broth protein is the least processed form okay. of that kind of protein. Okay. So it's just literally the bones broken down, boiled, whatever, dried. Mm-hmm. Here's your protein. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's a very very minimally processed uh, type of protein. Interesting. Mm-hmm. First question is from Abel J. Flores. It's often said that muscles have memory. Can the same be said about fat cells? If so, what does that process look like in terms of time if a person has lost a significant amount of fat from a healthy nutrition and exercise lifestyle? You can you can kind of say this. That's a great question. It right? is a cool question. My it, fat remembers a lot. If you, <laughs> well, I mean, so you can make the case for it because how you add fat cells. Yeah, so we should talk about that. So but now, first off, muscle memory is interesting, right? You You build muscle, muscle fibers grow, you increase the amount of satellite cells uh, that are there. Muscle mm-hmm. then shrinks as you stop working out. Satellite cells don't go away. So the build back that muscle the second time around, much faster. And it's actually quite crazy. It took me such a long time to get my, my body mass up to 200 pounds working out as a kid. Now, if I stop working out, dip below 200 pounds, I work out, I'd be back, I'd be back up there within a couple months. Right, I mean, right. It took me a long, long, right. long time. Now, with fat, it's interesting, right? So you gain body fat. Typically, the fat cells grow. You lose fat, the fat cells shrink. The fat, the memory of the fat cells it hasn't been proven like it is with muscle. However, think of the behaviors that we tend to get addicted to or that we tend to get used to when we gain body fat. When you lose fat, you change those behaviors. And this is when people talk about set point, like weight set point. Yeah. When you lose weight, it's very hard to permanently change your behaviors. And so you tend to go back to your old behaviors and gain the fat. So in that case, 
I would say there's where the memory is. Now, it's not the same as muscle memory, but I'd say that's where the memory is, is where if you've eaten a particular way, lived a particular way that makes you weigh 180 pounds, let's say, and then you lose 40 pounds, uh, you know, within a, let's say you lose it within a few months, uh, it's hard to stay to that new lifestyle because you live for so long the way you did before. So that's probably what's causing you to gain the weight back again. Well, not only faster. that, every time we, we gain the weight back, we also add fat cells and they don't disappear when you lose fat, they shrink. Yes. Right. So then the amount of total fat cells, and of course it's a lot more than a hundred, but pretend you have a hundred you, you, and then you lean down, they shrink. That's what makes you lean down and look that way, right? But they're still there. Then you, let's say you fall off the wagon, you go back, you blow back up, you add 30 pounds. Now you add... 20 more fat cells. Now you go, okay, I'm back on the wagon. You, you drop down again. You still have 120. Now this yeah. this really, it, now there's studies that show that this happens, but really it don't, so far- like you, When you extreme diet. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's when you go, when you diet down real hard and then you- in, you go way opposite direction, and which it, don't I would make the case that majority of people do. Well, so especially people who compete in like bodybuilding or bikini, because yeah. they'll do this twelve or fourteen or sixteen well, week. Well, even diet. the crash diet thing. Yes, yes. Yeah, so a lot of people that will lose hundred pounds uh, because they're really just like starving themselves. I yes, mean, from these like uh, fad things. That yeah. Are so to use the example of the competitor, you, you go sixteen week diet, you get super shredded for your show, your bikini competition. And then you're done with your competition and you gain back 20 or 30 pounds within a matter of weeks. By the way, I'm not making this up. I've seen this with my own eyes. People literally gain, women who hit the stage at 115 pounds gain 20 something pounds in a month or two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that fast weight gain, what your body does is it adds fat cells. And the theory is that your body's trying to figure out a way to capture more of this energy, right? right. You dropped your calories, your metabolism probably yeah. crashed. Now you're eating like crazy, you're, you're doing all the cheat meals, and your body's like, I need to figure out a way to be more efficient at capturing all this energy. It aggressively responds because it thinks it's in famine. Yeah, so you add fat cells to your body. Yeah. You do that enough times, and this is why competitors will find that it's harder to get sharp right. for each show. They'll be like, oh man, it was so easy for me to get super ripped and look really good, but now I've done five shows in the last you know year, and each time it gets harder and harder. I don't know what's going on. You might be adding fat cells to your body. And like Adam said, they probably don't go away. So you add a bunch of fat cells, and now it's way harder right. to get lean uh, the second time around. And that's from that extreme you know, cycle. So if you're listening and you do the cut and the bulk, but it really it looks more like a crash diet and an extreme bulk, you might be doing that to yourself. I think a majority mm -hmm. of people do. Yeah. I think it's, it's more common than it is the other way, where somebody is really good about, oh, they lost the weight, and then they've slowly... Let weight come back. comes back with a fear. Oh, it comes back with a fury because most people mm. crash diet. Most people go on some it's, radical new change. I'm going to try the carnivore diet this yes. month, or I'm going to try the vegan diet this month. They reduce calories significantly. They run it for a month, two months, maybe even three or longer, and then they go, fuck this. I'm yeah. going back to what I was doing before. And when they go back to doing it before, it's always way more at It first. takes way more discipline to totally. go slow. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, that is such a mental block that a lot of people just, well, I just want to go. Like, because when you have that motivation you want to go uh, and get to your destination as quick as possible and so a lot of people just make these compromises and they get to that place but they didn't do it in a healthy way that's gonna last i would make the case that there's uh less competitors this happens to than actual average people because at least some competitors are privy to this mm. not all of them know but i mean if you follow like elaine norton who's been touting this for a long time you're aware of this and it's become more popular to you know reverse quote, diet reverse diet yeah. and that that reverse dieting concept has come Come from the competing uh, world. Mm -hmm. That's not in the average. The average person does not talk about reverse dieting. The average person does not lean all the way out and then go and get shredded and go. Oh, I need to slowly reverse back. No, it's the it's and this is a psychological phenomenon, right? It's the all or nothing approach, and it's it's like this. We've all experienced this, right? I'm on a diet, and the diet says I can't eat carbs. Let's just say I can't, I'm on a keto diet. I can't eat carbs. So I follow that for a while. I lose weight because cutting my carbs has cut my calories, and now I'm down 30 pounds. And then I, you know, I, I, I go on a weekend or I go on a vacation and I say, you know what? I'm going to have a little bit of carbs. But now because I've had carbs, I'm off the diet. I'm off keto. And then it's like the floodgates are open. Yep. It's, it's not like I'm going to have a little bit of carbs and then go back to where I was before. It's like I've already broken the rule. I've already stepped over the line. I might as well 
go nuts. So when I've trained people or, or you know who've done these types of diets, they almost never gain weight, weight back slow. It's always this quick well weight gain. There's another part to that that I, this is what I have to talk to clients a lot is you got to be very careful because the day after and even the for a couple days after. The, all these extra calories don't seem to make a, a bad effect on your body, right? They, Not at first, right? Yeah, at first you go, holy shit, yeah. I drank last night and I had Jack in the Box and I woke up and I look better today than I did yesterday. <laughs> yeah. That your happens. Huge. This happens, right? Because you're on a, you've been on a, and the, with the, the science behind what's going on is your, your glycogen levels are so depleted, so your muscle bellies are, are that flat look. Mm -hmm. So you've sucked out all the, 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 the carbohydrates in there because you're so low calorie. And the water. Yeah, and water and everything. And then all of a sudden, you sodium goes up, carbs go up, calories go up. It fills all the muscle bellies up first before it gets over over spilled into storing body fat. It actually fills you out, so then you actually look better for a day or two. And that psychologically messes up a lot of clients because they go, "Oh shit, I I can get away with this." And before you know it, they're two three weeks deep into overconsuming. Yeah, and even this, oftentimes, especially with drinking, you'll drink and then the next day you'll wake up lighter. Yeah, dehydrated. Because you're dehydrated. Yes. And by the way, your body doesn't just produce body fat on your body instantaneously. It takes like a week. Yeah. So oftentimes the weight gain happens a few days later. Right. But we look at the next day, we weigh ourselves on the scale. Totally. Next question is from Kim Clothcorn. What are the benefits and disadvantages of different types of pull-ups, such as traditional pull-ups, chin-ups, wide grip, etc.? Is one style superior? Yeah, so just because exercises have the same name, like front squat, back squat, right? Split yeah. stance squat. Just because they're all considered kind of in that category of pull-up, wide grip, close grip, supinated grip, pronated grip, whatever, doesn't make them the same exercise at all. Now, they're similar, but really think of them as different exercises. It's a different recruitment pattern. The muscles will be used differently. You're going to use the lats more and one version ver versus another, the teres major or minor more versus one other, biceps more mm -hmm. one way uh, versus the other. Um, it's just different recruitment patterns, different exercises. And yes, they're similar because you're doing that pull-up motion and you're working the muscles a similar way, but they are all very different. So they all have value. Um, now, here's what I tell people with pull-ups is do the ones you have the best mobility for the most and then slowly practice the ones you have bad mobility with and get good at them. And typically what that looks like is, for the average client, is some kind of a uh, maybe shoulder width grip, pronated or supinated grip, depending on the person. Some people are better pronated, other people supinated. Start there, and then you can start to play with the wider grips. The wider grips require more stability and more mobility. And for some people, it takes a long time to be able to get to the point where you could do a wide grip pull up and then not kind of hurt your your shoulders or your body. Well, my response to clients is to to do the one that you do the least. If you never do neutral grip or you never do supinated grip, that's the one. That one ha has the greatest potential for change for you. If you do a overhand traditional grip all the time when you do pull ups, that has the least amount of potential for change. So if you're looking for change in your body, which is most people, most people are training to change their aesthetics one way or another. If you're looking for the greatest change, then the thing that you do the least or never do is going to provide that, that stimulus, because your body's not used to it. So it has the greatest potential for change if you do the same stuff all the time. Now, if your goal is to get really good at pull-ups and you have a competition with a friend on how many you can do, then sticking to one style is what will is, is yeah. what's in your best interest. Yeah. Some some are great for if you're trying to really uh you know target a specific muscle group and get more lat activation or get you know hit the biceps a little bit more like you know more of like a narrow grip and you know supinated grip something like that. I want to focus a little bit more on my biceps. I'll I'll tend to lean more in that direction. But yeah, to Adam's point, I do tend to want to work on things that I'm not as uh, efficient at because then you know my body will have to really work again, which then promotes, uh, you know, a whole nother cascade of benefits towards my other lifts. Yeah. For, I guess we can argue that a kind of a shoulder width grip is probably going to work the lats more through a full range of motion because you get more of a stretch at the top. Mm -hmm. It's more of a direct pull uh, on the body. But, you know, I've done wide grip and really felt it uh, in my lats. Um, from a functional standpoint, this is where people start to, this is where I have fun with the argument. It's like, okay, <laughs> which pull up is best for functional strength. Well, I would imagine, I would guess that it's probably some kind of a pronated grip pull-up because 
I'm if I'm pulling myself up on a ledge, yeah. my hands are probably facing in that way. I can't think of yeah, a way you where you can't would... scoop your hands behind something. Like if it's just a random object, you usually have to like put your fingers over the top. Yeah. Now most people are stronger with a supinated grip, where the palms are facing back, and that's just because there's a little bit more bicep. Mm -hmm. But I, for a while, I pr I practiced pronated. And to the point now where I'm actually stronger pronated. So if I if I do a pull, if I'm doing any weighted, pronated or neutral grip, I can lift more oh, than I can. Neutral grip is my favorite. I, I love that the most. But again, that's that's feeding my own itch. Like it's it's one of those things too. If I like having everything in tight too, I, I press and, and and try and get like that spiral line with my overhead press. Mm -hmm. And it's just one of those things that kind of it's another addition to that that complements it well. Well, that's going to be the most advantageous for your shoulders, right? Your right. shoulders are in the most optimal position in a, in a close kind of neutral grip. Yeah. yeah, you go wide and stuff like that. You're a little more compromised. So it's back to Sal's original point, mm -hmm. which is, you know, if I'm talking to a client that is limited because of their shoulders or something like that, a wide pull-up is probably yeah, more dangerous. You got to work your way there. Yeah, it's more dangerous than a neutral or a supinated type of grip. I think your your shoulders are yeah. in, a, in a much more favorable position. And, and here's here's a little side note. Uh, pull-ups with for low reps are phenomenal. I love, for sure. I mean, add weight around your weight. Really good super, at them. Super, super underrated exercise that a lot of people don't do. Oh, yeah. Get five reps. Put some weight around your waist. Do five reps for, for pull-up. Watch what happens to your back. A lot of people just don't even think about that. They think, oh, it's body weight, so I'll just keep doing reps. Try low rep oh, pull-ups. that's pull super demanding. Next question is from Bauer Physical Culture. What do you think of functional bodybuilding programs? What is this now? So, yeah, it was, it's a new name for everything. I know. I, so I'm assuming what they mean is a bodybuilding kind of aesthetic focused uh, program that also places some emphasis on making you mobile and functional. Because Bodybuilding is. Oh, you mean mass performance? <laughs> yeah, with maps like aesthetic. With yeah, maps aesthetic. Yeah, mass performance. I mean, this, is, I mean, this is this, when we wrote all the maps programs. I mean, here's a time. To, let's make this clear because I know our audience. Not everybody's on the private forum where we discuss things like this all the time. Uh, when we wrote all these programs, they weren't designed to like you can't ever deviate from them. They're designed so you go through them. We tell when we tell everybody like follow it to a T at least one time. After you do that, if you especially if you own multiple. They're very moldable, and you can take things that you you think your body needs more of from one program than the other. And an example of this functional bodybuilding program literally looks like MAPS Aesthetic is the programming, and instead of focus days, you run mobility, mobility. days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, then you literally have functional bodybuilding right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because one of the – so the benefits of bodybuilding are it's great – for connecting to individual muscle groups, so mind to muscle connection, nothing beats bodybuilding, right? It's very aesthetic focused, meaning you can sculpt and shape your body, uh, kind of like a sculptor with bodybuilding type programs, more so than you can with other resistance training type uh, workouts. Now, what are the drawbacks of training that way? You do lose some of that functional ability because you're so focused on sculpting the body from a visual standpoint, you don't focus as much on movement. And so you might not have the same functional ability as someone who goes to the gym and says and say works out more like a strong man or more like an athlete. They're going to just have more of that strength translate to the real world. Now, here's why I think for the average person, functional bodybuilding, I don't even know that term existed, but let's just, you know, from what we're saying here, here's why I think functional bodybuilding is the best way for most people to work out. Number one, because most people want those aesthetic changes. But number two, the functional component prevents injury. And here's my argument. If you improve your mobility, you'll make the bodybuilding exercises more effective anyway, right? So yeah. if you're, you know, you're doing your barbell rows, your overhead presses and your barbell squats and that's part of your body bodybuilding routine, does improving your range of motion, your mobility in those exercises make those exercises build your shoulders, your back and your legs better? Absolutely. So functional bodybuilding is probably if you just want to build your aesthetics, that's the way you should do it to yeah. really maximize the effect of those. Part exercises. of me wonders if if you could just categorize it as like full range of motion emphasis, like mm -hmm. with like hypertrophy style training. So mm -hmm. like it's just I I feel like some of that uh, gets lost when you get um, really focused on machines and and really trying to get the squeeze and the pump and and you're not quite as focused on full body type you know compound lifts. Well, yeah, what's hard about that is that most bodybuilding exercises are sagittal plane. So we, that too. You're, you're not doing a lot of, and you're not doing a lot of unilateral work. You're not doing a lot of, not a lot of rotating. Yeah. You know, so uh -huh. that's that. I mean, I love this. This is actually okay. It, it kind of how I run most of the time. Cause I love bodybuilding training. I just, I, 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 out of us three, I probably gravitate to that the most. 
So I typically do that, but I also have seen the tremendous benefit of training mobility because because there was a while there where I was all about that, where all of my training looked more like mass performance and mobility focus or even prime and prime pro. So I like to do a hybrid. I love to train most of the time like a bodybuilder, but then I know the importance of integrating all these mobility type of drills in there and what it's done for me. So I would say this is exactly how I train right now. I just don't have a term for it. I just call it, you know, MAPS aesthetic meets our MAPS performance. Next question is from Paula Angela. What are your big four supplements? Oh, this is okay. going to be hard for Sal. Yeah. <laughs> narrow, narrow down to four. Can this we make be, it big 20? This could be an hour conversation. No, you know, right? I'll tell you what. So th th here's the criteria that I would say for big four. These are the supplements that most people would benefit from. So that's where I would say that. Oh, because okay. because it, I could make the argument that if you supplement for your needs, well, then that's the most important, right? Mm -hmm. So if you lack vitamin D, vitamin D is going to be in your big four. If you lack, you know, you know magnesium, Magnesium is in your big four. So I'm going to speak more generally to what most people will benefit from. And one of the number one supplements is going to be creatine. Creatine is beneficial not just for strength and performance. It's also beneficial for health, heart health, brain health, mitochondrial health. You're starting to see it now in wellness supplements. You're starting to see now that they're, going, they're trying to supplement uh, elderly with creatine because it prevents muscle wasting and improves cognitive function. So creatine has got to be mm -hmm. one of those supplements, and it is. It's one of those supplements I recommend to everybody. Now, I don't recommend the same dose for everybody. I think if you have a lot of muscle mass, you're taking you know closer to five grams a day. If you're my aunt uh, and you don't really lift weights that much or even work out that much, then I'm telling you to take like one or two grams a day. Uh, but creatine's got to be uh, one of the tops. So that's your, well, I have my, I have three right away. So for me, it's uh, a protein powder, creatine, and vitamin D are, mm -hmm. the, are the three that I most consistently use. And you you make the point of like you know if you're lacking in that obviously for whoever it is that but I would make the case that I, what, what I saw I thought I saw a survey or study on um, the percentage of people that lack vitamin D it's over fifty percent yeah it's right? a lot mm -hmm. yeah so I mean that's going to be most people right mm -hmm. so uh, supplement but of course find out if you are uh, before you take that advice so uh, vitamin D for me is is a staple every day creatine right now I'm taking uh, every single day and almost every day I would say every other day or every couple of days I'm using uh, whey now that is just because whey or I bounce between that and the um, the vegan protein so but that is only because I'm I'm not meal prepping right now and I'm not getting all my food or all my protein uh, through whole foods when I'm really, really good, I actually don't use protein powder that often, but it's just I haven't been prepping like I used to prep. Yeah, you know, to the vitamin D, trip off this, right? So I've been supplementing with between five to 10,000 I use of vitamin D a day for a while. Um, and I also take cod liver oil, which has got vit a decent amount of vitamin D in mm -hmm. it. I went and got a blood test recently for vitamin D because uh, I had one previously, and I think, okay, I want to test my vitamin D levels semi-regularly because I don't want to take too much. It's a fat-soluble vitamin, and too much vitamin D is not good for you either. I went and got tested, and my vitamin D was at 45, like right in the middle. And I supplement with five to 10,000 every single day. Yeah, that's crazy. It just goes to show you. Yeah. Now, and I try to stay active. I try to, but here's the deal. I'm not outside that much. Most people aren't. And I live in California. Right. You live in a cold place, go get your vitamin D levels tested. Low vitamin D, it's like a hormone. It screws up your hormone levels. Your immune system is shot. It ruins your, your it could cause anxiety, uh, sleep issues, lots of problems. I've had clients who've had just all these health issues, got their vitamin D's levels tested, started supplementing with vitamin D, gone. Mm -hmm. All because That's they- That's a they huge like, one. That's number one for me. Right. I mean, that, is yeah, vitamin D. Vitamin D, I, I've tried with cod liver oil as well. Uh, and then, uh, you know, whey protein and creatine. And then, um, let's see, the last one was like a- it was a toss up probably between magnesium and zinc. Oh, for yeah. Can yeah. we count your Cialis or does that not count as no, a supplement? No, it's not a supplement. That's, that's yeah, not considered. That's, yeah. No, that's prescription. It's Viagra is the one that. It's uh, essential it's for him. But, oh, it's essential. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, here's the other one I'll add uh, some kind of an omega 3 fatty acid. So, uh, fish oil. Yeah. I think fish oil has got a lot of value mm -hmm. for the average person um, because our fatty acid intake tends to be pretty, pretty much off. Um, it's got anti-inflammatory pro uh, properties. It helps, uh, you know, thin the blood. Um, it's probably good for you. Now, if you eat fish, do you need to take, you know, regularly, do you need to take fish oil? 
Probably not. Do you have? You, do you know by chance? So I used to have a, like a rule for how I would take my fish oil, and that was if I didn't get fish two to three times in the week, I would take fish oil. If I had it two three times in that week, I wouldn't take it. Do you know what about? Do you have any idea of like what? Like I don't know if that's correct. Like if I if if I should be eating fish only once a week, and that's plenty to get enough uh, of fish oil in there? Or You know what's interesting is that when you look at, and here's a problem with these studies is they're all you know survey-based or whatever. It's hard because they're not controlled, but it seems to be the more fish you eat, the better. So like the, the people that eat fish a lot seem to have better health than people who eat fish you know, sometimes, and they seem to be better than, than people who eat fish rarely. So I would assume that fish oil, uh, regular supplementation is probably a good idea. I can tell a difference when I take it. That's the, one, of the, one of the supplements I take all the time. I take cod liver oil and I take mm. regular fish oil because cod liver oil is not as high in the you know, DHA and EPA. So I take Do you know, both. You know where I can see it more than anything is actually in my dogs. So whenever the dogs start to get skin issues or hair issues, you give them fish oil. I give them fish oil, and within about three days, it clears up. Their coat looks three times richer. Wow. Their hair starts to grow back in those places. Hmm. So and it's quick. So I notice it a lot faster than myself. Like for me, it's hard to tell if I'm like, oh, did I do I feel better? Do I notice those things? I don't know so much. It's hard. Yeah, but I could definitely see it in the dogs. Like when I whenever that because I'm not disciplined enough to give it to them all the time. A lot of times I'll notice that I'll start to see something going on with their losing hair or something, and then I'll I'll do that, and then I notice it. Now, what do you do? Do you open the capsule? Yeah, and I pour food? it on their dog food. Oh, they'd probably love that. Yeah, because they the smell of fish, right? So uh -huh. they, they won't eat the pill by itself, but if I crack it open and then I pour it all over it, then they'll, they'll eat it. By the way, here's a little trick. Some people, when they take fish oil, they don't like that. They, they'll kind of Burp taste up. it afterwards yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Here's yeah. a trick. Very easy. Freeze them. Throw them in the freezer. freezer. Yep, take them frozen mm. in there. You don't get the you don't get that anymore. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And it's probably better to I do it has that. something to do with like lemon or something. Because I heard like citrus helps. Nah, they make some. They make some that yeah. are like lemon. Yeah, they flavor. make the ones. That, so I have one specifically for the dogs that are supposed to be bacon flavored, but they still smell like fish. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah like, that is a nasty burp, dude. It yeah. is nasty. Yeah. So, but, but it, you probably and you probably a good idea to freeze them anyway because well, it say, can go bad. Well, I was going to ask you. So if you freeze it, then it doesn't change how how it ends up getting digested and then broken up and no. oh. it just it just it just keeps it. You know, longer, I would yes, think. Yes. Yeah, I would think it takes a lot longer. And like again, fish oil, it's a food, so it'll go bad. So if you keep your fish oil in, in your cabinet uh, and yeah. it's like all the time, yeah. here's a test. Take one of your fish oils, poke it with uh, like a pin or something, smell it. If it smells- Rancid. Yes, then your fish oil's bad and you got to buy new ones. I wonder how, how long does it stay yeah. good for then? A decent amount of time, yeah. but but sometimes they'll pa they'll package them and then have them in storage forever, and then you get them shipped to your house, and then yeah, I didn't even thought of that. And it's one of those supplements too that I, it does it stays in my house a lot longer than because I'm not taking it every single day. So, so you refrigerate them or, or freeze them. Okay, is something you want to do. Oh, cool. And then I agree with you guys on protein. Uh, it, higher protein intake, it, it tends to make people leaner. It helps with appetite. Of course, it helps with muscle building. That's a fact. Um, so I would say protein powder is one of those. And again, and just like you said, Adam, use it when you're not hitting your protein numbers. That, of course, that being said, most people yeah. don't hit those. Well, that's how numbers. I am with all of the, all the only one I'm not is creatine because creatine is really hard to get that additional like three to five, right? Because mm -hmm. I think I forget how many, how much steak. Pounds. You, yeah. Meat. You have to eat pounds of steak to eat, to make the go over the RDA, I think of like creatine, right? So that's not happening. So creatine, I'm probably the most consistent when I'm lifting mm -hmm. and I'm decided I'm going to take it. But the, even the vitamin D, if we had a week where like, uh, you know, I have trips where I, I'm out on a boat in the lake, like, and I am in the sun for six, seven hours every single day, I'm not taking vitamin D during mm -hmm. that time. Like, so if there's times where I, or if I'm prepping my food and I'm hitting my protein intake, I'm not using my, my whey protein powder yeah. those times. If I have a week where I'm eating mostly fish all week long, I'm not taking it in there. So always the goal is to go after all this stuff through whole foods. But the reality is I would say those are probably, I agree, yeah. the big four. Here's a special most. mention. I'll throw one in just for a special mention is uh, choline. Choline, there's some debate as to whether or not it should be an essential nutrient. A lot of people lack choline. Uh, women in particular benefit from uh, from having some choline, and it helps with brain function and general health. Where do you get choline naturally? Egg yolks are the best uh, mm. source. But if you don't eat those on a regular basis, uh, supplementing with choline can be pretty And here's a great thing you could do. This is a fun combination. Take some choline with your coffee or your caffeine and throw a little theanine in there, which we talk about all the time. Nice buzz. Mm. You get a great buzz doing that. Mm. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. Also, if you want free information, we have a library of free books uh, that help you squat better, build your legs, your arms, help you burn body fat, lots of stuff. 
Go to mindpumpfree.com. None of them cost anything. So you can go on there and download all of them and just learn for free from America's favorite personal trainers. I just made that up. We're America's favorite personal trainers. <laughs> also, you can find I'll us on it. Instagram. Uh, you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Wrong. You can look at, you can speculate on what's going to happen in the future and how it's going to suck. No, no, no. Don't do that. Just literally take the energy, it's just energy, and and just shift it about three feet over here and start looking at how you can make this work for you. It's just